Hey guys, Dare102 here from Bloody Chalk Productions, and today I am starting a new series. This series is called RFMC Insider. Basically, it's a little talk show thing where I cover upcoming uh, films and movies and other videos from other content creators on this wiki, and also uh, maybe a behind the, the, the scenes um, look at on how I make movies from uh, my techniques, and maybe if you stick around, I can. Um, I have interviews with uh, some directors of their movies. Today I'll be reviewing Jackie Poner's uh, somewhat recent release of Misfits. Misfits released in April 1st, 2018 and is a spin-off installment of the Unstoppable Cinematic Universe. Let's get right into the review. Starting things off with the cinematography, Misfits opens up with beautiful shots like uh, the sun's rays look a little too much, but they had a nice touch. Um, the cutscenes uh, that were filmed look pretty smooth. Um, I wish they were at a higher frame rate, but that's just my opinion. Um, some scenes do lack uh, color correction, but I don't mind that since it's not too major. In my opinion, the main characters of Mitchell, William, and Gwyneth are pretty developed. Um, the re reoccurring characters from The Unstoppables... Um, um, we're developed from uh, children from Sopples 1 and 2 to like grown adults who've matured and that really shows um, they uh, they're more wiser than they were in the past movies and they like bestow upon their no their uh, knowledge into the younger generation comparing the animations from this film and um, other uh, movies uh, that Jackie has worked on um, the the improvement is there uh, all, like animations do look a bit more smoother and the fight scenes are like more cor uh, well choreographed with the use of particle emitters and the effects the powers of the uh, cast really do look good um, the powers of Gwyneth or Gwen look like really smooth and I'm kind of jealous Mitchell's powers also look really cool um, the effects were actually done pretty well and the all the branches and all uh, all the minor details coming out they, they look good. Um, personally, if I were to have a superpower, um, it wouldn't be nature, but Jackie does pull it off really well. William's powers also look uh, pretty good. Uh, for a power set that's kind of unique, I don't really see any like acid spitting or like uh, acid controlling uh, uh, characters. Like I said before, the writing in Misfits is, is great. Uh, I believe this is one of the more better uh, works of Jackie, and he's really come uh, a long way. Misfits also adds to the lore of the Unstoppables universe, introducing the main antagonist, Bloodfenth. Now, on a scale of 1 to 10, on looks, I'd give Bloodfenth a solid 7 on the scare factor. I mean, he doesn't look too menacing, but his... Uh, power set and like what he does to the people in this film is pretty uh horrifying overall the misfits is a great watch if you have one hour of your time just to go sit down and enjoy a good old movie made in roblox the fight scenes are pretty kick-ass and the soundtrack is just amazing i'm actually using one of the songs that he used in the in misfits for this video right now and it's from a, one of my most favorite Halo games ever. If you are a fan of the Unstoppable Cinematic Universe, Misfits really adds to the lore and really builds things up for maybe an Avengers Infinity War equivalent of this. The characters in Misfits are well written and you can really sympathize with like uh, Mitchell's struggle to uh, be a superhero. Overall, Misfits is a great watch if you're a newcomer to the series or if you're an older fan of the series. I give it a 9.5 out of 10. Stick around for an interview with the director himself, Jackie Poners. We'll be on a short commercial break. My family! He's got a gun! Someone's breaking into your home. What do you do? Call 911? It takes the police an average of 35 minutes to respond to a 911 call. In that time, a burglar could have his way with your wife, smoke a cigarette, flip her over and go in for seconds. Don't let the worst happen to you. It is vital that you protect yourself. Do it the patriotic way. That's right. 
ammunition has all the equipment you need to protect your family from the evils of a liberal society. Fixed, mounted, and shoulder-held submachine guns, mortars, surface to wear and all manner of heat-seeking missiles, and just in to celebrate the Gulf War, pink and blue tracer bullets so you can protect your family in the dark. Start the week off right on Make My Day Mondays with two-for-one on maim, strafe, and kill landmines. Got Gulf War syndrome? Get ten bucks off all machine gun rentals. Hey, if you love your family, prove it with a gun. Ammunition protecting your rights. Hey, Jack. Hi. Hi. All right. Uh, all right. So uh, we'll start off with some uh, basic questions. Yep. All right. Uh, how's your day so far? Mm, not much. It's free. No homework at all. I'm uh, open for the day. Uh, cool, cool. So um, yep. I know that uh, Misfits came out a little while ago, but I still want to cover that topic. Yep. Um, Ask away. Now is released on April 1st. Okay, yep. that was like a month ago. Um, so what was uh, Misfits about? Um, it was about a bunch of kids who live in a society full of the corrupt Canada. It's uh, fictional. So there's basically the Unstoppables. Most people looked up to them and they suddenly left. And people uh, mistook their motives for something else and it made uh, Canada much worse. So the kids are living there and... They get somewhat involved with the Unstoppables, mm -hmm. and at the same time, Bloodfenth, the main antagonist, comes by and wrecks everything. So it's up to them. All right. Um, how long uh, did it take you to uh, make Misfits? Misfits started uh, November or September somewhere, and it finished uh, filming April or uh, March. Uh, that's and fair. It's average uh, took six to seven months because of school and mm -hmm. the stress. But most of all, I got over it, so it's fine. All right. Um, how long is the script for Misfits? The script is, hmm, uh, half the script is written and half of it I just Came let it off it? my mind uh, and free, yeah. really did it. So all I thought right. off the top of my mind as thinking, some of the scenes should go this way, or it would fit if I used the music like this. Mm -hmm. I thought of a situation and molded it into a scene. Oh, uh, yeah, I kind of do my scenes kind of like that if I uh, don't <laughs> have any ideas for a dialogue. Um, so, yeah. um, on a scale of 1 to 10, how hard uh, would you say animating uh, fight scenes were? Oh, boy, <laughs> I can tell you a lot about that. Uh, most of the time, if you want a scene to be um, more than 10 seconds long, it would take two hours if it's fast-paced. But if, it, if it's uh, really slow, like bulky or really slow motion, then it would take an average of uh, five minutes for each punch and kicking. Or Also, you have to position your characters and make it smooth and flow right. freely. All right. Uh, this is a question that... Uh... I need to know, um, I need an answer for. Um, how did you uh, do the little powers that everyone has? Oh, the powers that the... Uh, so I used particles, mm -hmm. and some of them I used trailing effects, or fire, or oh, some okay, of the kids. Cool. It's basically that. Animation is mostly involved with that too, or mm -hmm. enabling mm -hmm. the particles at the same time as I'm animating or playing it, I just enable them. So it looks like they charge or activate them, uh -huh. and for uh, the rock powers, I animate them using uh, the custom character creator and uh, Moon Sweet. Okay, so you use uh, Moon Sweet for uh, like um, animating everything, right? Yes. All right. Um, so uh, I know this is part of your cinematic universe. So is there any direct um, sequels to Misfits coming up? Direct sequels, uh, not necessarily, but it's more of a continuation of. Uh, Unstoppable. So, Unstoppables three is possibly involved with the Misfits. They have a bigger role in that movie, which is basically being planned to be released um, next year. Ah, cool. Right. I was writing, sticking up the schedule right. as well. So this interview is kind of like half the one I did with Jim. So I'm gonna ask you questions about uh, 
raid and rogue unit, if that's fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. All right. Um, so uh, this is, like, still in early development, right? Like, yes. It works? All right. So uh, how many, like, pages have you written so far? Pages, basically almost the same as uh, Misfits' process, but most of the time it's written as I want to develop more thriller genres into it. You know what I'm saying? So it's... All right. Uh, can you uh, please uh, explain our uh, Raiden it's, Rogue Unit's plot? Hmm, it's, um, it takes place possibly a year or two after Squad 41. Squad 41 the, you know, the infamous quote of you damn yes. chicks die. Yes. So he's, <laughs> he's reciting at uh, Fort Chester where most of the Squad 41 members live mm -hmm. and he's suddenly yeah. drafted to the Hikari Shokuin, which is a foreign task force full of those other similar to writing. So basically child and, soldiers. Yeah, ch All children right. soldiers. Yes. And most, they're most likely illegal, but you know, it's Japan and everything's yeah, kept. Yeah, it's Japan. So, they yeah. could sense 13 there, so. <laughs> yeah, so most of the time, Raiden's there for a long time, and he really dislikes the fact that uh, it's really harsh, it's strict, it's corrupt something similar to what um the misfits were um with so they're stuck in this camp uh Ryan calls it a cult camp or something like that because most of the time they're forced to kill which is really unfortunate they're age yeah. uh they 18 to 21 and they're all trying to attack these officials and getting away clean so Raiden is sick of it. He develops some type of PTSD, mm -hmm. and he just goes insane. And he also tries to find the one who sent him there in the first place. Nah. So this is like basically a whole uh, revenge plot, right? Yep. All right. More thriller. He's also finding the person too. Could we uh, expect any uh, more cameos from like Squad Forty One members <laughs> or uh, him <laughs> directors? <coughs> oh, one or two. <laughs> uh, uh, the Squad 41 uh, members do show up a bit. I think they have a minor role, but they're going to be a running movement. Mm -hmm. They're going to mm -hmm. be somewhat really uh, involved with the aftermath of a rogue unit. Uh, it's going to be really sudden for those who are most expecting the best from Raiden. Mm -hmm. But all I can say is this, is it's not going to go pretty right. Uh, all right. Um, I have another question. Uh well, I expect uh, more chink jokes in this one. <laughs> yeah, you'll be expecting a lot more. Yeah, I've thought about a bunch more of them. More racially involved, and it, it could lead to a bunch of conflict. Yes, a bunch of conflict in the comment section. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so, uh, are you going to release any uh, promotional material soon, or like a trailer? A trailer? Oh, yeah. uh, Ryan's getting a trailer very soon. Uh, I haven't exactly planned which scenes to use, otherwise the story would get really uh, revealed. So I'm trying to keep it kind of slow. Mm -hmm. So it, it's like easy steps. No. All right. All right. Cool. Oh. Um, so that's all the questions I have for you like right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's been great talking with you, Jackie. I uh, hope you yeah. keep up the good work. Yeah, thank and, you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, have fun with uh, filming the rest of R Rogue Unit. <laughs> uh, all right. Thanks. See you. Oh, wait, wait, one more question. Yeah? I've got to sure. read this off my list. Uh, do you have any inspirations or any reasons oh, for making uh, Misfits uh, or uh, Rogue Unit? Call me a weeb. Uh, my Hero Academia. <laughs> <laughs> my Hero <laughs> Understandable. Sorry. It, my it's okay, so man. Yeah, I understand. Um, their soundtrack is really pushing. If you look at your favorite uh, shows and stuff, or movies or influences, you'll probably get the idea of, um, hmm, this scene might go really well with this. So, yeah. All right. Something between those lines. So, My Hero Academia is the only influence for... Uh... Oh, there's a lot more. Uh, there's still... Um, uh, Wilson Yip's Ip Man. Ip Man? He's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah I haven't checked that out in a while. Yeah. Yeah, that's basically it. Uh, that's get... basically it. Uh, yeah, I guess so. It's kind all of right. hard to list other ones. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, now that's all the questions I have for you to ask. All right. I'll go. Uh, 
I'll talk to you soon, Jackie. All right. Yeah, see you. Have fun. Thanks. And now for something more exciting, I have a special guest with here t- us today. Um, Madformers Pro, the director of Alcyon, uh, wanted me to interview him for his upcoming movie. Okay. Se- second team take all right second time's the charm all right i think you yeah, sound better kind of, this time <laughs> yeah yeah like i was using a gas mask to like ah. filter out all the background noise yeah. and all that yeah because uh i think your audio wasn't that audible on my end <laughs> i see okay <laughs> all right so this is take two of the okay, uh, take two. interview so um all right for the newcomers out here probably watching this show uh what's uh Alcyon about uh, Alcyon is a mecha film about a girl named Alice who basically pilot gets recruited by the military to pilot the new Alcyon mech. Well, there's been many Alcyon mechs in the past, uh-huh. but this one is just brand new. So, yeah, she he is told hired to like pilot the Alcyon mech to defeat the yokai, which is basically giant monsters that invade from another world, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, cool. how long have you been working on Alcyon? I started work on it, like, around 2016. Like, around the summertime of 2016, I wanted to make a reboot, a comic rebooting the Revenger. But this time, it's going to be a sort of shape, I mean, size-changing mech or something like that. Mm-hmm. But considering I couldn't get hold of the rights, I decided to, like, rebrand it as Alcyon and create an entirely new story wow. for it. And I guess over 2017, I've been sort of developing the designs and story of the robots along with its script to be, like, filmed in <laughs> early 2018. So, yeah. yeah. So, from what you told me before, the script is uh, 42 pages, correct? Uh, yeah, around 42 to 48 no. pages. The script, like, as I go along, I'm going to, like, edit okay. the script a little bit just to, like... Fix things out, I guess. So, is the script finished, or are you still working on it? It's finished, but it's like getting, it's getting revisions. Ah, uh, so like minor rewrites. Like, yeah, like just for pacing and okay. I guess fleshing out other areas that I didn't think were quite fleshed out. So, yeah, considering I've like been working on it for a since like you know Alcyon's not going to be released in parts now. Like I'm sort of like fixing it up for like that element, like. Mm-hmm. For example, like when the first, like the climax of the first part is going to be, I guess, the first fight with like the first yokai. Uh-huh. So I'm sort of, in a way, restructuring it just to be a bit more like, whatchamacallit, evenly paced, if you get yeah. what I mean. Alright. So, uh, what can we expect from the story? Well, the story, we're going to be following along. Alona, the character Alice, as she is sort of forced into a new environment, sort of develop as we see her develop better as a character, I guess, and to learn as we she learns to like you know, uh, to act as she learns to actually trust more people uh. and you know stuff like that. It's it's basically a growth and psychological development of a character. So, in a way. Mm-hmm. So, um, is there going to be any romances with the main character? I don't plan any romance. <laughs> so, okay. there's literally not going to be any sort of romance in that sort of way. Just like, okay. you know, friendship building, I guess. All right. <laughs> friendship, teamwork, and all that. Yeah. <laughs> basically. All right. So, um, how was the uh, process of animating the mechs? Well, at first, originally, it was going to be. Like, sort of stop motion where I just move apart and, I guess, take a screenshot. But mm-hmm. if you look at early footage, like, when it comes to, like, sort of environments, the environment moves around too much and it just looks a bit choppy, if you get what I mean. So yeah. I switched to using, I guess, animation editor and custom, like, character rigs and stuff, which took 
a good long time to actually get the hang of, but sort of with that, it's a lot more easier now than it has been since Alcyon's original conception, I guess. So, yeah. All right. Um, so, um, I'm looking through my question list. Uh, All right. Um, so, how'd you come up with the uh, mech designs? Well, some of them were drawn, like, whatchamacallit. I think one of them, like, was drawn by Mitch for Batman, who uh-huh. is also a member of our community and, I guess, the old Roxywood community. He used to run, like, the original inside of Roxywood. Mm-hmm. And sort of the other one, and I guess aside from Jetto, which I guess kind of drew the design for, pretty much all the other three mechs were, like, sort of just came out of my imagination and... To be fair, Alcyon was inspired by the Revenger, like mentioned ah. before. So, yeah, there's, there's sort of that going for it. Okay. Um, this is a little off topic, but uh, have you uh, heard from Mitch lately? I haven't actually spoken to him in a while. Like, I think the last time I spoke to him was he was building a poster for, or drawing out a poster ah. for MediaCon depicting the, I guess, first fight for Alcyon. So, ah, yeah, I should probably so. contact him at some point. Yeah, we probably should. Um, he, yeah, he's a you nice said guy. he's uh, working on like some artwork. Uh, like... Well, originally for like I guess last MediaCon, he was drawing a poster for like what should we call it? Yeah, Alcyon, right? And mm-hmm. he didn't really have the chance to finish it, so I guess nah, it's been sucks. shelved for another time. Yeah. But from what I've seen, it looked really good. Uh, I believe he uh, did artwork for um, uh, mm-hmm. some Curry, right? Uh, yeah, he done, like, some artwork uh, for Yokai. Yokai, ah, cool, cool. Yeah, like, I think he drew at least, I think the first, one of the first designs was, like, a dragon Godzilla-esque one, and the other one was, like, you know, the first one we seen in the first fight, which mm. sort of had a Black Manta meets uh, the Xenomorph sort of vibe. Uh. So, yeah. Um, so, I'm just, like, improvising right now, but, uh, how long is the first fight? I mean, the first fight in terms of, like, uh, whatchamacallit. As in, like, how long will it be? Yeah, like, length-wise? Mm. Like, how do I explain this? Usually within, like, with, like, Alcyon's script, mm-hmm. I don't detail out the fights. Like, I have the fights be storyboarded. Uh. Just so I can have, like, you know, uh, a better visual representation of what I want to make. So... Like, I think the storyboard's about, like, at least four, 10 or actually more than 10, 20, 30, 25 pages long, depicting, like, sort of a comic, like, style of fight. So uh, I haven't gotten around to finish the, final, the first fight of a film yet. So hopefully, probably around maybe midpoint this month, I can probably get a rough estimate on how long it may be. Okay. So, um... Uh, do you have any inspirations like for the fight scenes or just the story in general? Uh, the story and sort of the whole concept mainly came from, I guess, the anime franchise Evangelion, which I really fucking love this dimension. And for most of the fights, I'm inspiring it from, like, I guess, other mechas. I guess, ah. like, aside from Evangelion, like, I guess the heavy sort of weight from each fight from Pacific Rim. Mm-hmm. And I think there's... I think there's a few others out there, like maybe Godzilla and just, and probably Guyver as well, yeah. thinking about it. And yeah, like there's quite a lot of inspirations. There's more stuff I want to mention that's going to happen later on in the story, but I don't want to spoil it for everyone, okay. so I'm going to like keep my constraints on, I guess. Uh, since we're on the topic of anime, um, yeah. Oh, uh, which uh, like mecha animes do you watch? Well, the one I've like only really watched and seen all the way through, which I fucking love, is Evangelion, the original Neon Genesis anime. Uh, yeah, it's like one of the best anime ever made, and it's I guess film end of Evangelion, which is a bit fucked up, but it's really fucking good. Very deep. Very deep. Okay. So. uh we're not going to expect any, like, super agile mechs with, like, a laser sword or, like, giant wings or something like that? Or... 
Uh, we might do, but not in like uh, sort of this oh. current inspiration of Alcyon. Oh, okay. Mind you, like Jetto does have Arm Blade, who is ah cool. cool. Well, technically, I know anything about it. Jetto is the most agile sort of one out there, and I guess is the smallest mech, so he does count. And yeah, I guess some of the Alcyon mech, some of the mechs do have like melee based weapons, ah. but so most Jetto... of the fights are gonna be grounded, right? Yeah, grounded in a way, like, each sort of mech has their own sort of style of fighting. Ah, like, okay, cool, cool. Yeah. So, um, do you have any plans for the, like, any planned sequels or, like, spin-offs? Uh, actually, I did think of the idea of probably other directors doing short story spin-offs. Kind of like what we see of, like, Blade Runner 2049 with their respected spin-off, like, film, like, shorts as well. And but for sequels, I am not sure if I, I haven't really planned anything for a sequel yet. So, if like the first, when all the parts of Alcyon One is out, and if people if there's a high demand for a sequel for Alcyon, I may make it. But until then, I don't really know if Alcyon may get a sequel. I'm just gonna be focused on like finishing Alcyon, I guess. Oh, okay. So um, is there any like estimate, uh, when you'll uh, release some like promo footage? Uh, probably release promo footage probably around a week before the film comes out because I want to get everything like all sorted out before the film is released so probably expect any like a new trailer or any new footage to be released probably around between the 21st and the 27th basically oh I, I just uh, looked up at the release date so it's coming at the end of this month right yeah, it is. Uh, uh, I just May twenty, May third. All right. May thirtieth. That yeah. makes me uh, ten times more hype than I was before. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, any estimates on the running time for part one? Uh, originally I thought it was going to be around probably like twenty minutes long, but now what I think about it, like it may be probably a little bit shorter, like maybe around fifteen, I guess, nah, like. Like something more bite-sized. Yeah, more bite size, I yeah. guess. Since um, and points films are like they're like an hour just for a part, and it's kind of overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. you know, I want Alcyon to like be sort of a well-paced series, yeah, if yeah, you get well-paced. I mean, like sort of like the Dark Knight, if you guess what I mean. Cause yeah, yeah. Them of the Dark Knight, I feel like the pacing of that film is fucking perfect. Like, you know, how do I fucking explain it? Just if you've seen the Dark Knight, you know, <laughs> yeah. the pacing is just yeah pretty fucking good holds up like really good it it's always on its toes i guess yeah. and it's never really overwhelming all right um i think that's it uh okay. i think i ran out okay. of questions fair enough right. yeah yeah um uh, jim you go take care and uh okay godspeed man. with the rest of uh, alcyon take care right. see you man see you bye if you liked part one, stick around because I might make more episodes of these. I plan on interviewing more directors and I might uh, go behind the scenes on how to make movies and such. And you might even get a surprise guest showing you how to animate. For now, this is Dare 102 102 and I'm signing off.